This is not a predator. Don't say this is a calumny. My dog, black star liners coming in the harbor. Several miles of black star liners coming in the harbor. I can see them coming. I see my eyes running. I hear Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to Music Connect Africa. We are the hub for music. All things music, that is, right? Each and each episode, we take a look into the history of our entrepreneurial professionals who are the driving force behind the scenes. It gives me great pleasure to highlight the players who exercise tenacity, drive, and who create a smoother operating system for our music art and entertainment systems. In this week edition, we highlight the musical accomplishments of Black Star Liner, Tall Tribes of Israel, Roots, Reggae Artist Fred Locks. Born Stafford Elliott and with a career that spans six decades, Fred Locks is a staple of the Reggae Music Fraternity. Cause it's repatriation, black liberation. I say the time has come, black men, we're going home, yes. Seven miles of black star liners coming in the harbor. Seven miles of black star liners coming in the harbor. Pick up the high priest on the mountain. Yes, Fred Lux was raised in a musically enriched environment. His career solidified within the heartbeat of Kingston. He was exposed to the vibrant sounds of ska, rock steady, and the traditional Jamaican folk music. His early foundational influence propelled the groundwork for the revolutionary path he chose as a career off and within the reggae music genre. Today, we vibe with the prolific stalwart, revolutionary Rastafarian, who is equally known for his soulful vocals and thought-provoking lyrics, and with a powerful, poignant, lyrical Black Starliner album that spotlighted and that solidified the longevity of his roots reggae status. Well, throughout the years, Fred Locks have maintained spreading his message of love, unity, and social justice to audiences across the globe through his professional recordings and touring the world. He has been afforded the opportunity to collaborate with other regular luminaries, such as the Abyssinians and Burning Spear. Well, welcome. Fred Locks. Fred Locks, are you there? Yes, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I'm giving thanks because the first blessing you get every day is when you rise up. Oh, so yes. I'm fully awake. Fully awake. Yeah, up, up and active, let me tell you. I just had the opportunity to make that awesome introduction. And I am enthused that by that whole introductions piece as well. <laughs> and that I had Thank an opportunity to, to make that introduction as well. Boy, when we're talking about decades of being in this industry and have made your mark, you have, you have done that quite eloquently, I must say. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Our praise is due to the most high because when you get that talent, if you bury it, nobody would know what your worth and, you know, so it was good that, um, I pursued a career in music because this is my calling, you know? Really, there's nothing else that I can do as good, you know? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I was 
<laughs> Within the introduction, I talked about, you know, you growing up in the heart of Kingston. Um, talk to me about a younger Fred Locks and growing up in right, Kingston. Um, yeah, I grew up, I grew up in a, a Eastern Kingston. Mm-hmm. From, I knew myself like um, that area that I grew up in as far as I could remember. It was Franklin Town. I was born in the year they called Dunkirk. But at an early age, my father decided that he wanted to move further. So he bought a house. So um, I was living in Arborview in East Kingston from I was 10 years old up to, you know, in my 30s, 40s, you know, before I actually started to tour. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I grew up in a family that um, was very great. My father and mother, 12 of us, no outside children, six boys and six girls. And then my father was a, an accomplished guitarist, so was my eldest brother, because I was the second of 12. And my, you know, and then my, I have a sister who could play the clarinet, I have a sister who followed me, who could sing like a bird, you know? So it was like my father used to just um, play his guitar and tell me, hey boy, come sing this song, you know? <laughs> Gave me a manuscript with the words. And he was the one who encouraged me at 17 years old to, to decide whether I wanted to play soccer, what we know as football, or to sing. And I told him my preferred singing. So at 17 years old, 1967, I recorded my first song um, at Studio and Coxon, you know, the Motown of Jamaica, you know? Yes. It was so nice, yeah. And those were some songs I was the lead singer for a group called The Lyrics. First time we went with it, like three songs in 1967, the following year, 68. I did two more songs. But um, we didn't get no dinero. The dinero was good. You people get trapped out. <laughs> but by 1970, I went to um, Randy's, uh, which is Vincent Randy's in, um, that is a V and VP's. Yeah. And I did uh, several songs, um, one of them being a cover of Bridge Over Troubled Water. Mm-hmm. You know, that was like um, a song that I, I was, that by that time, we had a trio before at Studio One, but one migrated. So by that time, I was singing with just one of the decorations as a duo. And we did a song like, we wanted to do it like Simon and Garfunkel. You know, line by line. When you're weary, feeling small. And then my brother said, when tears are in your eyes, well, I'll die them all. <laughs> well, you know? You, you know, you know, um, you know, Fred Locks, um, actually, Bridge Over Troubled Waters is one, um, is one of the tracks by yourself that I am actually, you know, love that track as well. Now, am I correct that? You recorded that track about when you were like 20 years old? 20 years old, 20 years old to be exact. I was, it was in 1970. I just turned 20. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you, you know, um, I would like our audience, you, there are so much recordings that you have within the pipeline. And we would like to ensure that throughout this interview, um, for persons who um, do not know about Fred Locks and for persons who know about yourself to jog their memory in terms of a few of the tracks as well. So I'm going to jump to Bridge Over Troubled Waters and we're going to come back with some more questions. All right. I'm okay. <laughs> All right.
ladies and gentlemen, yeah, that is Fred Ox, Bridge Over Troubled Waters. So, Fred Ox, I'm telling you, you didn't know I have that one, though. I found it. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Good surprise. You know, yeah. that, this song was recorded after the Studio One era that we went and did songs from 76 to 76 to 8. And as I was saying, you know, I was also anxious to record. Money wasn't like the... We wanted money, but we didn't get any good money. But when I went to Randy's downtown, and um, I did some songs before Bridge Over Trouble Water, but everything was done that said year 1970. We did some songs like late 69 going into 70. Original songs like one called Give Thanks, mm -hmm. the next one called Heat to the Right. Then um, we did a song named Love That Is Real, a more love song, Woman, Man, Love. And um, Randy's wife was saying, yeah, man, you must do more love songs to man. Took much of the, the message thing, you know? Right. So my brother decided that we could do bridge over a troubled water, you know? Yeah, Randy's loved it too. And um, he was saying, yeah, nice. I like when to do it um, near to the to the original Simon and Garfunkel. But what he did was give the rhythm to Jimmy London to sing the song straight and didn't release what I wanted after, you know? Right. But we were like, yeah, you know, but we were still happy that it was released and it was done so long. A lot of people don't even know that we did it, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> Jimmy London was released before and it enjoyed good um, this, um, radio play and everything, you know? Yeah. So one was like, was on back burner for a while. Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled yeah. Water. That's a classic right there. Wow, wow. Yeah, man. Now, now... That was like my mm -hmm. my first set of songs, so to speak. It's like I was debuting as, a, as an artist, as a young artist, you know? That was early days. Those were real early days. Long yeah. before Black Star Line or anything like that, you know? Yes. Would you say that at this time, was, you were at the peak of, um, you know, learning about your fate as a Rastafarian as well? Well, I was say um, I was born Rasta, but <laughs> mm -hmm. when you realize um, you realize who you are when you get up in here and able to um, yeah. know what, I don't know what you should be doing and which road you should really take. And that was like, it's a spiritual calling, so to yes. speak. Because I, I didn't, I, I didn't turn Rasta, I was born Rasta, I didn't, I didn't choose Rasta, Rasta, Rasta choose Rasta I, you know. Chose you, yeah. <laughs> it, like in my lifestyle, that led, led up to that when I was young, it was the environment. I wasn't following anybody, I was a stubborn little boy. But, you know, the light was shining and I had to accept it and let my light so shine, you know. Love it. Now, you know, um, I um, as a Jamaican, you know, it is that we have our nicknames and we call it nicknames or pet names growing up or whatever. And, and, yeah. and some of those names stays with us, not, not in only right. in childhood, but throughout, um, you know, life long as, as well. So for yourself, talk to me about, you know, how did you arrive at the Fredlock's name? I, 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 does it <laughs> just have to do with the hair or is there more I, I to it? I love that story, but I, I, I will just say, say decently. <laughs> when you, um... Okay. In about 1973, uh -huh. I was working. I was working in a, 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 um, a theater. I would buy food beer. My brethren who owned the property, he was refurbishing a theater that his father had built. Yes. It was not his father's own, but his father inherited. It was called Arambe. So Frank, as far the owner, who he became the owner, decided that he wanted to refurbish the thing and start to do some shows. No. When it comes to music thing, I knew him a little while before that and he asked me to come there and help and then he would put you on the show. So I was there with some other youth who were not singers. I was helping to clean up the place. So it was like I was like a hand man. Then my brethren, a brethren named Alric, came to stay up there to come was helping to do. Like we lived on the premises and clean it up. No other cousin who, who, who was incarcerated and his wife was going through a terrible thing, so she came and was staying there with us. Yes. So one Sunday, one Sunday, I was singing, but by golly, wow, they were singing the harmony. You know them too. There's a spark of magic in your eyes. You know, when I was singing, it's some little rasta, because the rasta community was a bull, be like, you know, it, it went some huge jump over the fence. There was like pure dreadlocks and appearances, rasta and thing, you know? Yeah. They were surprised to see. 
Ja, was soll das doch mal, dass ich in Schule ohne Glut nehmen? So, Mädel nehmen, being Anthony, I was saying that. I was a listener, so I was calling my group Tony and the Melon College. <laughs> so I used, I never forget the name Shanti. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, the name is so like some funny man name, you know. I'm used a B word or <laughs> B man name, you know. And I said, well, Rasta, if you have some name, it's so like Rasta. So, I don't know if it was like uh, maybe in the scene, so I said, you know what? Now I call myself Fredlock, so I try with Dreadlock. <laughs> yeah. And that's all. How Fredlock came about. So I named myself, and when the show kept, the show was kept in Arambe. That was the first time I sang at Fredlock. So I guess we sang a song. Mm-hmm. Black Star Liners. <laughs> Never <laughs> record yet or nothing, you know, but mm-hmm. I was rehearsing with that band, and everybody, you know, in them time there, everybody suffering. So when you get a band, when you hire a band, they want to know to them going to get paid. Yes. But Frank now was saying, him, I'm trying to refer with the spirit and him can give them a smile. Them came to one rehearsal, never turned up. <laughs> Although him had Count Azzy and the Mystic Revelation and Cedric Brooks, who is a saxophonist, they were on the show. Some people were saying, hey, bring up everything, you know. Well. So I just, you know, I sang that song much to the, the, the approval of the audience. You know, first time singing Black Side and it's like I've been just tired, catchy and sing with the answer, but I was, at them time, if they made real, they have video thing, but I will not tell you. It was the one of one of the best recordings you would have heard. It was so sweet. And they loved it that much that I, I sang my favorite artist song, one of his songs. Now that the change has come, you know, we must live as one. A deep brown song, you know. I was rehearsing those songs with the band and they never come. So they to sing it still, you know. So I sang those two songs from 1973. You know? We talk about songwriting and writing your song, and even at the top of the hour, we started off with Black Starliner um, as well. Um, and the song, as referencing Marcus Garvey's um, shipping line, the Black Star Line, which was intended to right. transport Black Americans to Africa. Do you want to talk about you know writing that song? Mm-hmm. This song was inspired not only by Marcus Garvey. But as you would coming up, Julia one day, if you, uh, uh, my songs were all about girl love, yes. girl love songs, you know? That was an era when everybody was singing about, you know, I was going through something, I was, the first time was called, I get it, the girlfriend leave me and say, please hear my please and believe me when I say, my girl has left me and she's gone far away. That sing a song, them, don't, um, um, don't let no man break your heart and them songs. So I held that version to me by a couple of years. Started to dreadlock from you know the late 68 going into 69. So by them time with the around is already not to dreadlock and thing. So my brain was saying to me, I could add them aside the face, sing more cultural songs. So it was a brother named Owen Good that said to me, Hear them lyrics up. Table bands of black star liners coming in the arbor. And they give me that, them the words and the melody. A lot of people when we get to interview them say them sir, let me tell the truth, but they have to talk the truth. That's correct. You know? yeah. So when they give me that you no, know, like when I say them time, work with that you know my youth, you know. So I remember my sister having a book, um, a small book of philosophy and opinion of Marcus Gabby, the excerpts from the original book. So I went to my reader of the book and come the next day I said, Joe when we finish writing the song, you know, say your class here, you it's so ironic, because some people have some misinformation. When I record a song, I see them bring them reissue the Black Star album and say that I finished writing the song in the studio. That mm-hmm. was not so. I wrote the complete song in 1968, and it was recorded in 1975, which is seven years after. And the first time I sang the song was at Seven Miles Bull Beer. And I was born June the 7th, so 7th seemed to be like coming following me up and down, you know. And that was my first solo song, and it was a hit, you know. Yes. So, 7 is a really significant number to me. So the, the, the inspiration actually came from a brethren who suggested and gave me the chorus line, and I completed by delving into find out more about Marcus Gavin and the Black Star Line. So after reading that little a philosophy and opinion, it just come natural. Because um, my father used to have me singing, so I was like writing. I wrote my first song when I was 12. 
I, I entered spelling bee when I was a youth and came good in it. I represented my school, although I didn't win, you know. Right. So I was very, I was grammatically great, you know. So I was writing songs because I, as I said, my father was my inspiration in the sense when I grew up listening to him play his guitar and telling me to sing out some big song like some not cool, you know. You know, Black Island, I came from the fact that even the brethren gave me the melody for it. Was, was It made it much easier for me to just continue. And by the time I read the verse, but I can see them coming. Because the chorus just led you to that. So when I was singing it now to my brother, most of us were just playing the cards. Because it's not like now people give you a rhythm and you write it. I was singing my melodies and they play to my melody, which I know is international, uh, you, you call it, like it's your, your property, you know? Yes. The intellectual property, so to speak. I was writing songs, not poems, I was writing songs that I write, I wrote words with melodies, you know? So the, that's what, all the songs I did in them time, except for the cover like Bridge of October's Water, was songs that I wrote, and we had to go to musicians and then listen to you and find the card that's in and the key and things, you know? So yeah. Black Star Line, I became a classic and give thanks to the brethren, you know, and I saw him about 30 something years after in America. And when I went to a house, a brethren was surprising me, same time or somewhere, when I reached there, I see him and said, John Wayne, so what happened, like? I would say, I don't want you inspire me to write Black Star Line. And, and him said, tell me that I will never believe him. And him say, the liar them take a big man like I, if you're a liar, brethren. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what happened? Yeah. I went back to try and see him and him say he moved from the area and he never see him again. I never saw him for about 30 years. Wow. I call him the mystic man. Well, you know, um, you touched on Dennis Brown for a little bit. I am going to jump to one of your tracks, uh, um, you know, the Dennis Brown as well. And we'll be right back as well. That This segment, okay. we will cover some Dennis Brown as well. Love you, baby. Dennis Brown. Yes, Dennis Brown. I can listen to Dennis Brown all day, all night. Let me show you. I have um someone made me a Dennis Brown CD, all his songs. And somebody called my house and they lend me CD and found that I don't see the CD anymore. <laughs> like, it was like losing a part <laughs> of me. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes. What you to tell you, Dennis Brown, I opened that show. That he was on in 1998. 1998. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1998. I think it was Independence Time, August. And then when I was coming off the stage, then he was singing one of my songs that I made, that I did for Exterminator Crew with him, Dreadlocks Princess. Yes. And my brother was there. My brother said, "Why, wow, you just don't love this song, my brother? It came a goosebump. I said, me too. So. The night before he died, 
end of June, I was coming into a studio and Dennis Brown was coming out with a producer. Yeah. Hear this story. And Dennis Brown looked at me, I can't say two times, 12 times, you mentioned that earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and said, Leave wife, two man, two. Me and you have to do a collab, you know. I said, What? Dennis want to do a collab with me, here, my producer. We have to go for my tape, you know. <laughs> you know, real to real days, you know. So the next producer with Dennis Brown, I said, I have to go for my tape. So me said, Yeah, why? Look at me and Dennis have to do two songs then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, Why solve the problem? Look at the two songs. So, he went there, the producer named Donald Henry. Yeah. And we live in America. He said, I was going back the next day. He said, Hey, Fred Lux, you and Dennis Brown, but I do a good number of to go back to America tomorrow, you know. And then he said, So, what can do the tune then, man? Don't worry yourself. So, Donald went back inside the studio and said to the youth, I want to book some time for tomorrow, youth. So the next year, Donald called me and said, We'll get 11, I think he said, We'll get 11 to 2, or 10 to 2, something like that, about 4 hours, 10 to 2 in the morning, I think, from night to morning. And said, When I call Dennis Brown, I don't get to him, I don't know where I go on. Then, you know, I'm the studio already. So, but I was the man with Woolly for real to real 24 trap tapes, you know, and I look distressed, you know. Mm-hmm. When I call Dennis and I get him, the same you who was the engineer come out and said, Donald, let's stay there. I think he said I'm going to them. No, Fred Lux and Dennis Brown said I'm going to do a call up, man. So we waited out until after two. I'm going to call them, no, Dennis Brown. So, like here, shall leave down the door about something pouring in the morning, or whatever it was. And I said, it just come from the news that Dennis Brown did. This was July the 1st. I cried like a baby. I couldn't believe it. I was saying, that is not the truth. They said, no, man, it just come from where Dennis Brown did. I'm, I'm, I couldn't listen to a Dennis Brown song. I could, every time I hear a Dennis Brown song, I just go in and I can't kind of cry. And I'm so emo, over-emotional because Dennis Brown was expressing that the more I'm going to do a collab on this. So why this happened? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I just couldn't understand, you know? Wow. So so I was saying I have to do a tribute to Dennis Brown for this because, and you know, I went to a studio, you <laughs> ever hear about Bad luck, I follow you. Mm-hmm. I got to some producers and them say, covering songs don't benefit too much because we don't get much rights and them, them refuse to do that. So I got to some youth of a band named Uprising and the manager and them say, yeah man, I did 16 Dennis Brown songs and 14 original songs. I mean, I I sang and make the rhythm and make and sing for some of the songs of the 14 that I did. Yes. And them had some, some rhythm. I you know what happened. I, can't, I talked to the engineer who was the bass player and said, Right, you can't sell Potter Rice. You know what I said? Well, I get them tuned there on some CD. I must say, tune like the original. I made them in the studio. So, Uncle, we have a balance of the tune them and give like Wednesday, man. So, Wednesday, I was heading to the studio and I said, Uncle, we're not going to be able to do this today. Come tomorrow. The next day, somebody called me and said, Yeah, well, I'm with Uprising. I said, Well, I'm getting a big contract. He said, No, the studio burned down. <laughs> so the studio burned down. The owner for the studio, him living in America, is a pilot at Jamaica. And he went as far as giving people who, who, who would retrieve things like that for the FBI and everything. And he said, I can't bring them back. And he said, Oh, I cry like a baby. He said, Fred Lock, we just spell nearly a million US so for refurbish the studio for this. If me not mad, you can't mad then. <laughs> wow. And that's like, oh, no, you know, I'm uh, interested in next brother, you know, uh, American brother, in doing this Dennis Brown tribute. I'm saying, yeah, man, we we'll start off the three songs, the Black Liberation there, Malcolm X and White Fools. The engineer was this honest with the man, got some money for buy somebody else and never come to the one call on him. And the man decides to tar shoe the project and say, I'm not going to continue. However, just days ago, the man was here about less than two weeks ago in a Jamaica. I didn't say nothing to him about it. He went back to America and he said, um, I had wanted to finish the album. I said, you know, I did some tracks with different, different producers. Then it's going, I'm paying a tribute. And I wanted the three more songs to complete. And said, you know what? I will produce those three songs. I just spoke before the interview to some musicians to give me an estimate of what it will cost overall. For the musicians, look how we're doing it. Back to basic, no computerized thing, you know? Yes. Create live thing. 
Yes. So I'm telling him I was going to an interview, so he can't call me yet. But actually, he's supposed to can tell me how much it's going to cost for the musicians, studio time, etc. Mm. And you know, I'm going to complete three songs and give it you the right to know this. The three songs I'm going to do is one is Weep and Moan, the next one, Deliverance Will Come, and, and Created by the Father. So I actually have nine songs already. I'm going to make it 12 songs. So as uh, Fred Lock sings Dennis Brown, that's what I want to call the album. I have Inseparable, mm -hmm. and you, you know that one. And I have um, the medley, which will be the first two songs on it. I did over Silhouette, Whip Them, Jada Jada, Whip Them. I do one, and not a very familiar one with even them, Got to Let Love In. Um, I did um, Concrete Castle King. Couple of songs well, so you know, um, you know, it will be 12 songs when it's completed. So I beg you for long life and good health to complete this because this is my Dennis Brown is a singer singer. I know much singer like Warrington, he was doing a, getting an interview and then he said, Who's your favorite singer? I'm saying, Dennis Brown, he's a singer singer. Everything I want to be like him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dennis Brown, the voice of Jamaica, the sweetest. So I mean, was a little youth, nine year old, I heard him on a thing called Nuggets to the Needy singing King Solomon and I was like, whoa, that child started to win, but great. This Brown, he was playing inseparable before. Wow, one of my favorites, you know? <laughs> when I did it over, I was so pleased with myself and I said, wow, I get to do this. And it was more pleasant to hear his family was like uh, saying, yes, Fred Lock, you did a good job, you know? That is it's on his birthday, his memorial in, in um Georgia Fifth Park, we were called um real schools up in um in, downtown Kingston area and I was part of a, 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 a set of musicians and singers who was doing um, songs, Dennis Brown songs, you know. When I did that, I got the greatest applause from everybody, you know. Fred Lux, 
as we talk mm-hmm. as, as as i listen <laughs> i tell you i could get lost in dennis brown mm-hmm. uh, you know we are almost forgetting mm-hmm. that i'm doing an interview i'm like what <laughs> But you know, as we talk about, we think about the medley. And I love the medley. I love the medley. And you know what? Um, how fitting it is because um, there are, as we talk about covers, there are persons who actually do covers on various artist projects. And sometimes, you know, the covers aren't up to par, or there's something, you know, taken out of context. But you took it a step further as well, where it is a medley. Yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, for myself, it is maybe because I am I am a Dennis Brown <laughs> person. Where it is that all the tracks that I've listened to thus far within the medley are are tracks that resonate with myself as well, and I hope to the listening audience as well. But as we talk about the medley and your reconsideration to like redo and cover a whole album of uh, Dennis Brown, what would you like the listening audience to take away from this album? Yeah, Dennis Brown, as I said earlier, the singer, singer. He's a singer. So to, mm-hmm. to, 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 to do a tribute to Dennis Brown is something that I wanted to do. And I like the listeners say, uh, well, I'm sure I appreciate that. For he's a crown prince of reggae, you know? Dennis Brown is a, is, is a people's artist. So, you know, doing this, I, I'm hoping that the, the, the wider public and regular listeners will say, I'm glad Fred Lux did something like this, you know? Because yes. Dennis Brown is no longer around to to entertain and you know to really do over some of his songs to leave a lasting memory that that we love them so much that we had to do this too, you know as a singer you know that is not just people who can't sing love Dennis Brown you know we are singers love Dennis Brown that's right so that's what I wanted I wanted people to know yeah. you know I'm saying love him so much that I wanted to pay a tribute mm. and I would like them to just love it as much as I and give thanks. That um, I was alive and well enough to do it, you know. Yeah. Well, what a legacy! Got up to the, you know. What a legacy as well, and uh, what an opportunity it is that um, you are afforded as well to be able to still be able to do this and say yes, this is yeah. what I would like to do for you know Dennis Brown. And I can just feel your pain when you talk about, you know, you were supposed to be recording with him, and then you found out that he passed. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> if I was to tell you, I follow about an ex artist, so it's a, oh, Fred Lock, why? You know? Yes. You know, that I just want to push in this little one. I was at Trina Smith House mm-hmm. in Kingston and he started to play guitar and Sugar Minus was there and said, I started to sing and said, Come in, Jalak, and help me. And we just start singing. And Trina said, Look, great, he, but for record this song, you know. You know, I came up to my Deja who like, Sugar said, It's a to record of my studio. And Trina said, I don't care where to record as long as I do it. I'm starting all the time with Dennis Brown and the, the yeah. studio. I'm say, oh my God, this can't be happening, though, you know. So I said, yeah. Deja vu. I could live long enough. Deja vu. You know what happened? A couple of days after, Sugar called me and said, relax, I'm in my studio and Lindwald comes to I'm an engineer. The tune, you know, my wife would do the tune. I said, I tell him from Tina Days, Tina House. Oh, I said, I don't sure if I remember. I said, don't worry, me remember it. Mm. So when. When he called me from the studio and said, Fred Lux was down there, so I said, I don't know if I can remember it too, but you know, I said, I'm on my way to our next studio, we can't do this tomorrow. <laughs> oh. And I said, yeah, man, if you say so, Jalax. So the next day, his my manager at the time called me and said, Sugar, you know, the hospital, I'm not, uh, boy, I'm looking, I'm not going to make it. I said, oh my God, I, this can't be happening again. And she said, yeah. I'm going to send all them daughter to represent him in Canada. And a couple of days after, I just said, Sugar, gone, you know, Fredo. I said, Jesus, Jesus, what that man? Wow. What them things keep Apple happening to me? Wow. Oh, yeah, it's all a sad thing again, you know? But, you know what is best, you know? You know, um, one of the other tracks they have highlighted as well is Black Liberation Day. Um yeah what does it mean what does it mean for you to be able to um reproduce uh, you know this reproduction as well uh, the original the original recording that the, when the studio burned down it was one of the musicians who said that this was one of his favorite dennis brown and, and, and you know i requested it so when the studio burned down i suggested to the the brethren from atlanta that I done this song before about what happened and, and he said, love that song too. So that was because 
I loved it eventually. When I sang it the first time, I was saying, whoa, I got a man requested that car. Then it's have so many songs that I didn't delve into to find out the real lyrics for this song. Like, you know, there was other favorite Dennis Brown. Once I was singing it, I said, whoa, I saw that song, a sweet man, you know? So it was one of my favorite eventually. So during the uh, during the, um, the song time, you no, know, I, I definitely um, told the, the producer, I want to do this Dennis Brown because it means a lot to us. As Rastafari people, they want to see what people free, black liberation, you know. It, it coming out of a black style, it's a, it's a patriot, a black liberation, you know, I sang about that, you know. Yeah. So it felt like a continuation doing a Dennis Brown song of that magnitude with the same message, you know. Let's give the audience yeah, a man. listen to Black Liberation Day. One by one, two by two, and my sisters do. I'm sure my days will be long and my nights won't be few. Hey, through the vision that's in me, I can see clearly who we, where there is gonna be peace, love and harmony, black understanding among my people. Yeah, among my people. Oh yeah, hey, they're gonna jump and shout, black people. Oh yes, say we're gonna sing and shout the right understanding day. Oh yeah, say we're gonna jump and shout Black Liberation Day. Oh yeah, say we're gonna sing and shout the right understanding day. Oh yeah, yeah. Men and people will try to cut you down. Yes, of course it is that you know vibing to Dennis <laughs> to, to to Fred Locks and you know um covering Dennis Brown and boy oh boy I'm telling you I might just get carried away with this whole Dennis Brown thing <laughs> and we, we have so we have more to cover. You know, <laughs> go ahead. Could I butt in? Mm -hmm, go ahead. My brother sent those those songs to uh, another person who was interviewing me from New York. And um, the other songs that I already did, the brother made it a Dennis Brown thing. He played nine Dennis Brown that I covered mm -hmm. in a row. I was saying I got nine already, so it's only three of them. All of them, because my brother sent them to him, and he played all nine. And he said, whoa, my God. Listen. And one was waiting, I was listening to the radio station for long, and wonder what when he went and played the man. The man played up a thing, and said, we soon just, Fred Locks soon join, and and then eventually ended the program by saying, Fred Locks is a guest artist and um, today, so he went play everything a man played. The Dennis Brown, and plus I work for that tune, ended the program with me, you know? <laughs> it was nice to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it could easily, could easily get lost in Dennis Brown when you're talking about talent. Is, you know, the authenticity is voice, the authentic, the authenticity, the um within his vocal ability the songs um mm -hmm. his songwriting the story just how effortlessly it is it is done like you say he's a singer's you know singer Sing man uh, yeah. yeah man he was born to sing he was born I to mean, sing some people learn things learn to sing and get good and yeah um, i wouldn't want to say for myself that i was born i think i was born to sing but i don't think i have the greatest of Dennis Brown, you know <laughs> but i feel happy if you know i could cover them you know yes 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 mm. wow wow yeah, man. Um, as we, as we dive into, you know, your, the, um, the various, um, things that you have done throughout the years, um, the various producers. I work with Coxon, uh -huh. right? Um, I work with, um, and his, um, VPs, you recall them now. And I've worked with Exterminator label at the Swatis who produced the Lucianas and, and the Cecil of Big Songs, you know? Oh, and I work okay. with all of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and, and, and I've worked with independent producers like the one who did my Black Sign album. I've worked with the producers overseas too, you know, like um, Philip Smart in um, New York, the yes. album called Fred Locks Culturally. Mm -hmm. I've worked with the um, producers in England who did um, a complete album called Mission for the King. You know, I've worked with Black and Dread who has, you know, has done an album with me and I have an upcoming album. I did a 
I did um, a, a remake of As a Girl Tune in my house. In my house, there's a picture on the wall. And, you know, I do that tune over and I'm going to use that as a title track. And you know, that that is a soon to, soon to be released album. But that track has been released plus two more songs that will be on the album. One called Gonna Be All Right and my have a song named No Old, No Cold, you know? Let me let me no, ask. Think so you get up in a year. You can't, you can't <laughs> sing like one time. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely gotta gotta look out for that one. But you know, as we talk about the yeah. various albums, you um, for myself, I'm counting 11 albums. Is that what it is? No, I would not think it's 15 released uh, um, albums that came out like on um, vinyls and them things. But I have songs that was just released, albums that was just released. And um, digital download one called What Life Has Taught Me, Music Is My Calling. I went for the album, I think I got about 20 if I should add those, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, one of my all time so, one of my all time favorite is Susie Wong as well. Talk to me about the Susie Wong tune. All right, so Susie Wong is a song I love long time. I didn't know. It's when um people calling family was not the norm. Or the common thing. Yeah. I used to say Jacob Miller and he would say, Why well, after family? <laughs> and it wasn't the norm. I don't know if you knew something, but I found out that Jacob Miller is my cousin or was my cousin. Um, that found out this after he died. Yes. His, he should have been Elliot, but his mother didn't give him his father's name. Yeah. And I found out that Maxi Priest, Jacob Miller, myself, um, Paul Elliot, we are all cousins. Mm-hmm. Um, we traced it back to Max the Priest, um, was the one who made me find out all of this. Uh, we found out that both our grandparents were first cousins. Oh, wow. You know? And then um, it goes down the line and we said, Yo, pure singer, I'm a thing. We said, We'll get the DNA, you know, man. I tell you, Max the Priest, you could be like one named White Mike, and next to a young youth named Nature Ellis. Yo, you name them, take a mirror. I said, Wow, a band for sing, you know? <laughs> 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 they were things. Someone come on a Jacob Miller without even knowing him was family. Yes. And then I'm sorry. I'm saying, wow, go to Kawhi, I'm doing it now, still, you know. And then I found out that I was saying, yes, I'm glad, you know. Yes, man. So, so if you want to play it, I'd be so happy to listen to it because I hardly hear these songs after I do them, you know. Of course. I, I have Suzy Wong. I'm always prepared, you know. <laughs> I took a trip up to China way. I said I'd stay just a day. To my surprise, there to see another lover was there for me. Susie Wong, she's a lover. Her words are hard to discover. Susie Wong, she's my baby. I don't think I'm crazy. Circus or the movie show. I always wonder why she loves me so. I can tell only Susie knows. Susie Wong, she's a mystery. The first love I ever had in history. Susie Wong, she's my baby. I don't think I'm crazy. Susie Wong. To China way, I said I'd stay just a day. To my surprise, there to see another lover was there for me. Susie Wong, she's a lover. Her words are hard to discover. Susie Wong, she's my baby. And don't think I'm crazy. Wherever I go, onto the circus or the movie show, I always wonder why she loves me so. I can tell only Susie knows. Susie Wong, she's a mystery. The first love I ever had in history. Susie Wong, she's my baby. Yes, 
yeah, so I'm telling you, Brenda, um, you, 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 you don't disappoint. You don't disappoint. You, you give a hundred percent plus more. <laughs> hundred plus. I know that. Thank you very plus. much. I am. I, I have pure goosebumps. <laughs> pure goosebumps. <laughs> so so well, you situation as well. You know, as you look as 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 you look at the years, um, you know that you have given. Um, that this industry has afforded you, I should say, in terms of reggae music itself. Um, we, we, we spoke extensively um, about um, Dennis Brown. But um, in terms of collaboration, if you had to collaborate with any artist, and I'm sure you can, um, but any artist that you haven't um, worked with within the industry, someone that you would really like to, you know, do a recording with. Who would that artist be? Yeah. Well, maybe you don't even know them offhand, but you have some young artists of bad, bad, bad. But the, for, for the popular one of them, I don't like to see him thing with Capitan, you know? <laughs> I just like the fireman style, you know? <laughs> and we had the original fireman, you know? Yes. That fireman rope, you know? I don't know if it was like, we do call, we do, do call up, um, don't play it already, you know? Yes. But, Black style and I was, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I'm not so close to him, but it's one that comes to mind quickly. And even if I could have done a collab with the great Max Priest, who is family, Max you know, mm -hmm. and, and Paul Elliott, yes. you know, they're not to keep it in the clan, it's going to clanish, but it's very nice because they, they are great artists, like we're well, just well, nice to know that we did that, you know. Yes. That yeah, were for the artists, man. Uh, kind of thing, stuff, man, but, you know, like, the one person that came to mind, I think, is because I really feel good, like I like where I was Cape Town to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would, I would, yeah, I would, yeah, I would, I would love to hear Cape Town and a friend loss. Yeah, you know, you know, you see it. <laughs> the fireman, the fireman, the fireman. You know? <laughs> yes, Cape Town, man. Yeah, bad like that. I know yeah. Cape Town is a very intellectual artist, you know, like a people don't know that. Oh, I've yes. seen Bunch, when his manager died. Mm hmm. This project came. See, Capitan sang at the funeral. I couldn't believe he was singing that. He sang a cover song, a gospel song, and whatever. Move, move. Everybody was touched and said, I can't believe Capitan can sing so good. But there's a few um, singers who have that, that, that talent to do. Like um, Yellow Man, Brigadier, Jerry Sisler, you know. Some yes. artists who sing singers are, them just talk. Them, them go ask you and sing, you know, because they're not really have the melodies like it. No, you were right with the father of that who from a long time, you know? Yes. Start um, doing some some things with melodies like, you know, a long time years with the automatic bass, the remote control, you know, them things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, um, you were right, come and say, you can do it, baby, do it, you know? Rock it, baby, rock it. You know, like it's singing from them time. You know, nobody else can't take credit for that because you were right, the father of the sweet melodies in, like, I'm um, a Five two one one time for the top 10 charts in Jamaica, you know, and you came different, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, may God bless his soul, you are gone, but you don't do the still. So it's Dennis Brown, and all the one that moved past away, you know. Oh, if a great artist, then right, Wilson, Swim, Smith, you know. You know, man, Tabby Diamonds, you know, oh my God, my God. I love him, so yeah, I want to tell you this. I did a collab with Tabby Diamond just mm -hmm. months before he passed. So it's, it's called um, Blessings Galore. And it's going to be finalized somehow by the producer. Don't know when it's going to be released. But we didn't intend, I would not expect him to uh, meet his demise in such a way. But yes. I'm glad I did that song. But too, because of that, I did a song called Murder Can't Bring Back Life and mention him in it, you know? Yes. Well, um, as, you, as you talk about Murder Can't Bring Back Life, guess what? I got that too. Yeah? Yeah, I, <laughs> I got that too. That we're gonna run it for. Uh, we're gonna run it for. Our audience. I'm a new album, Born Rasta. Yeah, my new album. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. We have it. Yes, I am. Serious crime, leave everything to God and time. If you continue to take revenge, when will the war and the killing end? Don't bring your guns to town. The life that you saved could be your very own. So don't bother to kill one another Think twice, think 
twice before you take somebody's life. Cause good again bring back life. It will only bring more strife. Murder is a serious crime. Leave everything to God and time. Look how they kill my brethren caught away. Yeah. A peaceful man who never trouble nobody. Nowadays, judgment don't take too long. I said to take revenge is I know no. You reap just what you sow. So murder can't bring back life. It will only bring more strife. Murder is a serious crime. Everything to God and time, to God and time, murder can't bring back life, no, 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 oh. hurt so bad if they kill your father and mother, it hurts so bad when they kill your sister or brother, can't bring back a life that's already gone. To forget and keep moving on. Walk away from trouble if you can. Don't study no evil plan. Brother man, brother man, hey. Murder can't bring back life. It will only bring more strife. Murder is a serious crime. Leave everything to God and time. Not because you have access. To be gone, oh yes. Don't give you the right to go shooting people down. Everyone is having fun, but you are having none. You're always on the run. Well, you know, you know, Fred Jackson is. Um, as I listen to your tunes, this is not my first time listening to your tunes because I do have you in a playlist actually um, that I've that I've put together. Um, especially, right. I have a playlist like I, I fast once or twice each week. I've been doing it since I was um, very young, you know, like 14 years right. old, 13, 14. I started fasting at least once or twice per week. And it's not, it's not, it's not fasting, fasting and praying where I right. am one with the most high, um, you right. know, giving thanks for um, health, wealth and strength. Um, in all things, right. right? And I I have a playlist where it is that these are songs that when I come out of, um, you know, fasting and praying for that day, I listen to, um, I put on that playlist because it's an extension of what I've just done as well. And to put me back right. intact. I will understand fully. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. as, you know, but as I listen to the various tunes as well, what a legacy it is. What an honor it is for me to be having a conversation with you. Do you know how rich that is? Because I, yeah. as I... I will get a good, <laughs> I will get a good job to be very witty. Yeah. Come on, come on, like a catalog. I say, and a catalog, I don't have a lion log. Well, let me tell you something. As I listen to, as I listen yeah, I to your, to, I should have taken up comedy, but I, I think that I like it. So I decided to continue singing. You know, it's never too late. I'm a very good comedian, too. You know, it's never too late. Not just a comedian, a comedian. You know, <laughs> it's never too late for a show or rain. As I listen to your lion log, <laughs> as I listen to your lion log, let me tell you, right? Um, when we talk about the richness in terms of your ability your vocal ability it is so rich and it it, it, it hasn't changed and it just gets better with age it i would better, say it gets better with age it, that is it that, that, that is, is it that is magical it gets better with age because as i listen to you, you the know, recording you know i attribute that to mm -hmm. when i'm um, some producers like when i when i was at cox and i was singing my song and then make the rhythm treat. So that was my good days of singing. Right. When I started to do Black Star Line, I know the producer them started telling me to sing in a special way. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. which I was vexed about because when the black star and I was singing it like Dennis Brown, I was saying like, say the best to black star line it, you know, and yes. I go up in the and the man said, it's a repatriation song, drop the key and sing it, so say the best of black, I said, let's spoil up my song, say, it's a hit song we have here, man, and it's it, you know, but shit, I didn't want it like that, you know, Yeah. What? But, mm-hmm. but now I'm able to, to, to improvise and, and do songs the way I like it. So everybody is saying, well, Fred, you know, you could have seen so good. Your father and them songs, we are seeing. Who, you know, man says something, say, yes, I gave thanks that I got the opportunity to, to sing how I want to sing, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, so now, not everybody can produce us, you know? I'd say as well, I am happy that you have actually seen your production growth um, throughout the years. As well. yes. You know, yes. Especially, you know, so we're talking about six decades. Why? I'm telling you. Yeah, but- from 1967, well, it's about 5, 6, 7, 7, 9, 7, 7, 9, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, go fully into the Rastafari field because this is my calling. So I wasn't recording. I had withdrawn for years, you know? Yes. And just like, you know, it happened after that that I said, wow, oh, can't bear my talent, I'm in a business, I'm not talking about my money. Them gone. If a man thinks the money can bring life on them things, and them rob you, and when them dead, you throw a million US and the thing or a million pounds, you can't get up back, so make them go around no money. And I said, my message is more important than money. And so I, I want to survive, but Anybody who rabbi, them only put a, a judgment on them own self, you know, not yeah. me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, it is that. Right. Murder, Murder Can't Bring Back Life is one of the tracks of the new album. And, you know, Born Rasta. Born, now for this new album, for the listening audience, um, is there a, what would you say is the major difference between albums you have recorded in the past? compared to this album. Is there any notable difference? Uh, this album. Mm-hmm. This album was produced by an ex-singer. Now, about Murder Can't Bring Back Life and two more tracks on the album, um, Standing in Love and the next song. Um, I don't remember the name right now, so many songs, but three songs I did, um, I sang it, sang them and made the musicians find them. So I was happy about, I, I was able to sing them how I want. But the producer had some great rhythms, and he was just a friend of oh, I write some songs to them rhythms, and I found some good songs, and I was able to, you know, to do them how I wanted, you know, and and they, it came out so great. So the difference was that um, the producers in the past, except for Cox and them, some of them, um, you know, some of the producers, not all of them, wasn't able to get the best of me because they were trying to dictate how I should sing. Sometimes even with Fatis, I did that album because never give up on the most. Don't go on them, I know them, you know. When I say Fatis is not a singer, man, love make me sing my thing, you know. And I say keep it, keep it not normal, you know. But I did a good album for him, even my favorite song. Uh, my Dennis Brown love was never, um, was never Dreadlocks Princess, you know, and Dusha and I loved it, too, you know. Which is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, um, like, they the sample them, um, Diamonds Rhythm, not to dread the level, run away. You know, so it's, a, it's like because of that key, I could be able to sing that song in a good way. Like it was normal for me to just pitch it how I want, you know. Although the rhythm wasn't made for me, you know. But well, you know what happened? When I sing for that rhythm, the dude and I say, Why the boy all night, I'm not going to sing on it because I think you have the best song on it so far, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not feeling good to hear them say that, so, you know. <laughs> and then this one was loving it, you know. I imagine me walking a show for the end when I'm a part and I say, Great Locks with me. I said, You can tell me why, you know. <laughs> wow, I feel great. <laughs> so, you know? so, so, in retrospect, you're saying that this new album, you were able to sing and show um, your own style my versatility. and your versatility. Yeah, and my versatility and, and, and more. Um, I was choosing, I was able to choose the rhythm. That is what I, I missed out. Okay, all right. When a producer have already made rhythm, sometimes you go and I say, oh, you can't get to express yourself as much because maybe you have to sing too low. 
and you don't get to, to show your range. But this producer gave me the right to say, Red Locks, choose them with him, man. When you want your ego prep on, let me start right the time. I say, yes, yes, the name Alfonso Enkel was Enkel. It's a strange name, my mother, you know. I said, Red Locks, you never hear nobody in Jamaica have the name, you know. Mm-hmm. And, him, and, him, and, him, and him say, all right, you like them? And him say, yes, yeah, so some of them don't have a right one to prep for them, you know. See? So, he have a label named Montego Records. See? And he'll and he'll like, he'll, he'll, he'll choose the one and I didn't even know he was a producer because for music and I told him I like choose the one and him go to the studio and lick it over and then he says, Alfonso, really, some man with the lick them with him and for him to do some other rhythm to so some real rock with him and other things. So I was saying, well, you know, I'm with the one, the choose the one and where? And then he said, well, it looks like where you do it, you know. And um, we can go to do some tune if you, if you want to work with me, you know. He said, all right, so. I'm living in America, I start sending down some rhythm. When I'm sending them down, I'm a fine song. When I come to America, I know the studio, and then I tell them I wanted to do the original song. So, and it was, it was in choose about that. That's how we do murder, can I bring back life, standing in love. Then, and them tune there. So, you know, I was able to do this album more to my like, unlike with Fatis, who just come and say, if you have some song, you better try to fit them for rhythm when we have inside you already, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that was a difference. So, I love this album. Right, here we go with <laughs> with um Born Rasta. Wonder where if you know that. Yeah, say me born Rasta, me never turn Rasta. I'm not turning faster. Born Rasta, me never turn Rasta. That's why me must prosper. Born Rasta, me never turn Rasta. I'm a son of the Creator. Born Rasta, me never turn Rasta. Rasta for I is my master. For my parents made love in their little room. Before I even entered in my mama's womb. I know my blessings, my blessings are enough. I was conceived to very perfect love. I'm born a star, me never turn a star. I'm not an imposter. I know me born a star, me never turn a star. That's why I must prosper. Born a star, me never turn a star. A son of the Creator. Born Rasta, me never turn Rasta Rasta Farah is my master I identify with King Selassie I I'm called by his name The Rasta Farah When the wicked hear his name They start to tremble No Eden cannot enter The righteous man assemble me born Rasta, me never turn Rasta I'm not an imposter I say me born Rasta, me never turn Rasta That's why I must prosper Born Rasta, me never turn Rasta I'm a son of the Creator Born Rasta, me never turn Rasta Rasta for I is my master Oh yeah now He's the King of Kings whoa, 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 whoa. to help people who are in need and I'm living up to the Ethiopian creed let the hungry be fed the naked clothed seek nourish the age protected and the infants cared for that is what I'm here for because the born last time and never turn last time I'm not an imposter. I say me born Rasta, me never turn Rasta. That's why I must prosper. Born Rasta, me never turn Rasta. A son of the Creator. I say me born Rasta, me never turn Rasta. Rasta for I is my master. Before my parents made love in their little room. Before I even entered. My mama's 
Born Rasta, Born Rasta. So this is the title track from the album. And let me tell you, this song is such a powerful song. When you listen to, it's not just about the music, but it's also about the songwriting. And when you have great songwriting, good music, what do you have? It is, is um, a collector's, this is going to be a collector's item for years and years to come. If you pick this up 10 years from now, 20 years, 50 years from now, this this right here is uh, a collector's uh, item. Uh, again, Morty, you know, say, um, who was able, uh, who got the privilege of listening to them, say, Fred Lock, mm-hmm. they got work for album in between, but I think it's the best album since Black Starliners. Mm. They look at it and, sing, and, and singing wise. Because in the album with Fat System, it was nice. Albums that I did, I work for album, I say, count 15 or whatever. But a lot of these albums that I did was like not um, to my likings when it comes to um, the rhythms that I was given, you know. Right. But I could sing on them. And I even a guy, a white guy in England, said, Fred Lux, why do you put lyrics on these washout rhythms that everybody's on? Exterminate of this, <laughs> of Aperton, you name them. And everybody's on the same rhythm, you know. Yeah. It don't show your, go back to basics, man. It's your thing that you, even coming from your youth, you know, this is not your thing, you know. But I had to do it because one of my best albums is a lot of um, do over rhythms. Um, if you should come across this album, Fred Locks Culturally, bad album, a lot of people rate it. I did that for Philip Smart. And our next part is not about Jerusalem, but Philip Smart was at the, at the helm of doing the engineering work. And I did have a, and a lot of all the rhythms were rhythms that were made before studio ones and all these rhythms. And I find some nice songs, you know. And I like that album too, but I prefer this so far, you know. What is your message? So, what is your message to the audience that will listen to this interview as it pertains to this album um, as well? Well, the producer, I love every single thing. Go out there and buy it. Make it a collector's item. Make it a hit. It make is. It, um, can live as long as you said a while ago. Mm-hmm. For years to come, like a Dennis Brown album, you can stick it up and say, yes, this is one of my favorites. I want people to support it because the message is in the music and we made it for the people, you know, the people who, 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 who make us want to make music and want to stay into music, you know. So uh, with the fans are not, I like to um, get some new fans so after them listening and say, okay, it was it worthwhile listening to Fred Lux and I like his songs, you know. So the message in the music is what I'm really more of want, of wanting to promote, to say, yeah, I think I put a lot of effort to produce on my so your hope is that the audience will go out and support, support, support. They yeah, should. This is a collector's item yeah. right here. I did not. Um, we did not go through many of the tracks, but the signature track itself. I must tell you, it already sells the album. The authenticity, the vocal, the vocal ability, and you know, just of the course. theme itself, and just how. Yeah, not the only one. Yeah, and who just gave comment on that cycle track in the same way that you did. Yeah. I have an ex-manager who would say, pray that one rest of food so you can't sing. Exactly. You know, content, you know, you know what I'm Yes. Saying? I think I think for myself, what I've what for myself as an interviewer, um, what I've recognized is that the flexibility and versatility that you have in terms of your voice and the recording. I never really realized that until today and actually listening to the tracks and right. seeing your range. Thank you. And seeing your range that you have, your musical range that you possess, I'm like, whoa, yeah. And yeah, we are I talking too, about. I just I have to keep... agree with you. Must I get a chance to express it in the right way? You are know, you're standing in love on them children. I said, wow, yeah, that one good enough, right? You know, when I was doing um, that original standing love, when a musician who play a keyboard, I said, Fred Lux, that sure shot is a what did you know? You know? Yeah, the thing, the thing about it, the thing about it is that this is one of the things I talk about. When you, when you have artists, I always say to persons, I don't think that there's a bad song. I don't label songs as bad song. I look at it as each artist enter the industry and there are levels to singing. There are levels to the industry, right? right? But it's not. It's part of being an art. Now, when you get an artist as a manager or a label or whatever you're doing with that artist and you stifle their creativity, stifling someone's creativity is actually saying to them that, you know what, 
this is how I want you to sing. If you already found the artist yeah. singing a certain way, I don't necessarily see w w what much it is that you have to change because you are really interested because of that original art. Now, if you're doing something of to course. enhance the recording or, rec or doing something to record the vocal ability, and you have to move with the times as well because, you know, we're in a digital age as well. We're into different things as well. But to preserve the authenticity of the artist as well, um, I, I, I don't accept watering down the production because it is that I want you to be like another artist. The uniqueness is what makes us who of we course. are and Different stand the test of time. Are. Yes. All right. I, I just got a, a text recently. Mm -hmm. Don't be a copycat because, like, I don't remember the direct word I'm saying. Don't try to copy because nothing can be the original. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If you're original, you, a copy of you is, is not you. It's original, you know? So, you know what I'm saying? They say right now, more and big up Enco, the, the producer, but they say, I faith in me and I did this. But yeah. I work with people of like manner, you know? We who, appreciate the, who, who it. Who Rasta like you and them know, say, they want to see the best for you and they want to bring out the thing the best way that they possibly can, you know? Yeah, I must tell you, I appreciate this album. Um, you know, to vibe out itself, you're going to listen to Jesse's and Nose. So what would you like our, you know, persons listening to know about Jesse's and Nose as we vibe well, out? Well, okay, the truth is that black people have been a downtrodden people. The rest of our right people have got through that where they don't care which complex and them So this song's about... They mustn't give up uh, because uh, whatever they do us, the Almighty sees and knows everything. You can't hide from man, but you can't hide from the Father, you know? See? And if you don't believe in God, well, if you have a conscience, you can't hide from your own conscience. Because you have atheists, people who don't believe in a God. But if them go sleep at night and know so them do evil, them can't, if them have any conscience, the rat but never eat it out of conscience, they be a then they are going to trouble them for know them doing evil, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that's what the song is all about, the message and the music. And so, yes, in closing, we are going to vibe out with Jesse's I Know. Okay. Oh, yeah. Liberty. Watch your liberty. Yeah. Yes. Watch it. Watch it. Don't let the system pull you down, oh no, get up and stand up, and defend your own, don't let nobody take you for no clown, don't be like that greedy dog who lost his life, all because of a boat, no, just sees and knows everything, so you've got to live a bright Just see that knows everything What sun in darkness must come to light We must never bow To no wicked evil system, no Too long now The people have been the victims Of malice and prejudice when we ride, they say that we're wrong. Hold on to the faith, my people. Got to stand up strong. Just sees and knows everything. So we've got to leave the right. Just sees and knows everything. What's done in darkness must come to light. Hey, yes. Watch your liberty, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, it has been a pleasure having Fred Lux in our studio. In the early 
late 1970s, Lux embarked on his musical journey. Of course, initially, he you know, was with local vocal groups before branching out as a solo artist. And his breakthrough came with the release of the debut album, Black Star Liner, in 1975. Just know that you can always go and pick that up within your store as well. Check out the digital store where you can find the Black Star Liner by Fred Lux. Whether performing on stage or advocating for social justice, Lux's influence extends far beyond the realm of music, leaving an indelible mark on the world around him. You need an interview, you heard him speak about you know the um young kids always great to know that the artist is actually one with the younger community as well as they need that reverence as fred Lux continues to inspire audiences around the world with his soul stirring music and unwavering dedication to his craft let us continue to celebrate his achievements and give him his flowers while he is alive <laughs> of course this has been <laughs> this has been Music Connect Africa, the hub for global music industry news and insights. And each episode, we took and we take a look into the history of our entrepreneurial professionals who are the driving forces in the music industry. It gives me great pleasure to highlight the players who exercise tenacity, drive, and who create smooth operative systems for our music, arts, and entertainment industries. I thank you for tuning in with me and. Until next time, thanks for lending to me your listening ear. And defend your own. Don't let nobody take you for no clown. Don't be like the greedy dog who lost his life all because of the boat. No, just sees and knows everything. So you got to leave the right. Just see that knows everything. What's done in darkness must come to light. We must never bow to no wicked evil system. No, too long now. The people have been the victims of malice and prejudice. When we're right, they say that we're wrong.